Thank you so much, Sam, again for your time. Don't change your winning side, huh? Yeah, I'd love to say I'd had a, a, a say in selection, but no, it's, it's great to be out there with um, some guys we played with last week and got a bit of uh, bit of flow on with, so yeah, really nice to, to have the same 15. 136 caps, mate. I, mean, I suppose you'll reflect on this at the end of your career, but where does that win in Joburg stack? Yeah, I've had a few people um, ask me around that, and yeah, it definitely rates up there. There's a fair bit of noise and pressure, as there always is. So there's always pressure and noise as, as a test match rugby player, um, but definitely a nice one to go out there and, and play some good, attractive rugby and, and score a few points too. So really, uh, really nice to get the win over there. Um, but it's always different. Like it's very hard to compare games to games. Every game has a different flavour and different feel but that uh, definitely was a nice one. Sam do you still think that it's only about the win in an all black jersey? I mean you say it's nice to score some points and tries and things but ultimately does it just come back to scoring more than more points than them? <laughs> yes sometimes it's uh, you know we do, we do as rugby players and when I say rugby players I mean everyone no matter what team you're playing for we do make it more complicated than it needs to be. Sometimes you just got to score more points than them but at the same time, it's really nice when you do get a good win and you've actually played well. You've worked on a couple of areas and now have gone from a weakness to a strength. And you're actually playing to the level that you know you can as a as a group and as a team. So sometimes the, the win is, is the nice thing, but uh, it's always nice to dive a little bit deeper and work out why you got the win and um, you know what is the reason for winning. Sam Whitelock with us, 136 caps for our country. And Sam, so, you know, conceding those rolling more tries against Ireland, uh, you know, I, I just thought, uh, you know, God, you must be, you must have hated that, being, you know, in that eight and hated that. And to, to not concede against South Africa in two tests. And Foz said after the first one, hey, that was a big improvement. And, and I think people probably actually have accepted that after the win in Joburg. But, you know, how, how big a deal was that to you and your mates that, that, that we didn't concede those kind of tries? Yeah, it's, it's definitely something that you've got to take personal. Um, and, you know, I definitely do take it personally whether you're in a in a scrum and you're giving away scrum penalties or you're conceding more tries or whatever it is. Um, that, that is our job. So, you know, we can't unleash our back line if we're not doing our job, um, if we're conceding points there. And, um, you know, we have made some strides in that area, but there's still a lot of strides to be made. Um, so it feels like we're starting to get a bit better of an understanding of, what we're trying to do and how we're trying to do it. But now it's actually been able to do it repetitively and do it constantly. Do you ever get phased by anything? I'm just going back to when you say there's a bit of outside noise and stuff like that. It just doesn't, I don't know. I don't know you well enough, mate. Do you get phased by anything? <laughs> um, oh, no, there's definitely things that will uh, put you under pressure and different things like that. But the best, uh, best advice that I was given, especially early on, um, I came into a side in 2010 that, we hadn't played that well in 09. We'd lost a couple of games to South Africa in a row. And the best thing that the senior players said to me is, look, don't read the media. If you need to, um, at that stage, it was no social media. It was all yeah. more uh, newspaper. So it was, hey, look, if you're going to pick up the paper, have a look at the photos. But, but that's it. Don't need to read every article and find out everyone's opinion. The people's opinion need to worry about is yourself. And the first thing you need to look at is your effort. And that's how I've always kind of tried to operate it look at reviewing my game and looking at my effort. And if my effort's there, nine times out of ten, you know that you're putting yourself into a good situation to have a good impact on the game. Do you say Sorry. the same thing to the new no, players yourself? Sorry, I was interrupting. That's, Sorry. That's no, 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 that's right. That's exactly uh, what, as a senior player, you've got to pass on because it's no different now. Instead of picking up a newspaper, it's social media, it's you know different posts, it's things online. And... The same thing is, you know, the people will put a, a, a title or a headline out there to entice people in to have a look at it. But it's just understanding that, right, if you're going to look at yourself first and look at your effort, and then everything else flows from there. And that's something that I, I think a lot of people do um, get caught up in. And when I say that, I mean whether it's first 15, whether it's club rugby, is actually looking at effort first. If you've got the effort there, then all of a sudden a coach has something to work with. How well are you playing in your own mind right now? You said, you know, in your debut in 2010, 100 and something, 30 something test matches, two World Cup wins. How good are you today? Oh, that's not really for myself to judge. Um, 
I know that I've just got to get out there and um, I'll be asked to play different roles in different stages, whether that's carrying the ball, whether it's being the defensive line. you just got to be ready to play your part for the team. So um, best thing that I've kind of learnt over the, the time is you can't go chasing it if you're trying to carry the ball the whole time. You normally get in the way of someone else and you're not prepared for it. It's actually just amping in systems. So that's uh, something that I've definitely been... Um, flirting with over the last couple of years, just going, right, don't try to do too much. It's actually just what you do do, make sure it's really high in quality and normally the game will come to you if you're, if you're ready. I don't want to remind you of this, but that's why I think all of us were surprised when you actually offloaded and tried to flick that pass in that last test. I was just thinking, my God, that's the first time I've seen that in a hell of a long time. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you've got to trust yourself. Like um, Everyone wants to be in those high-pressure situations whether it's, you know, you, this pass, you win the game. If you don't nail it, you, you lose the game. Um, but it's one of those things that you've just got to go back to what you've been training and you want to be really good at the basics and then everything else will, will flow from there. I know that's telling everyone how to suck eggs. No, 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 mate. Um, well, you can. you played 136 uh, tests, mate. You're allowed to. <laughs> no, oh, like, honestly, out of all of it is, you know, I look at all the great players that I've been lucky enough to play with and against they do the basics so well and all of a sudden the basics turns into something spectacular but the reality is they're just training a skill they've done millions and millions of times. So what David Beckham said, mate, 10,000 free kicks or 20,000 free kicks. That's why he was able to step up and whack him in. You've been around Jason Ryan a long time with the Crusaders and that. How much of an actual difference has he made? Has it, has, has it been really tangible for you with the All Blacks? Yeah, it's been, been really good. He's uh, stepped into that role which was a pretty tough situation for him to step into, but he stepped in there and made it his own, and he's demanded a few things straight away, which is which has been really nice. Um, obviously, had him for a few years, so I have a good personal relationship with him. Um, but, you know, a really good relationship, but at the same time, he's not afraid to, to square me up or vice versa around what I need to do to improve, whether it's something small that might just make a slight uh, tweak in my game or within the team's game or whether it's something big and massive. So really nice having uh, Jace around. Um, got some massive energy and the boys are definitely bouncing off it. Sam, what like with us, Argentina on the weekend? You played under Ted, Shag, Foz, uh, Razor, Todd, all these guys uh, over your c- career. Does it really change that much? You know, do, Does every coach bring something that's completely different or is, or is, it, is there more kind of like an even line to everything? Yeah, that's another question to get asked a little bit. You know, like what was what was Ted like? What was Steve like? Um, what's Fozzie like? What's Razor, Toddy? Uh, I was in Japan with Robbie too. Yes, they they definitely bring their own feel and own style of how they are as head coaches and and as coaches. And I, I think that's what makes every year every team so enjoyable and so different because not every team is the same. Whether you have a pretty settled squad from year to year. It doesn't matter what level you're, you're playing at. There's always different personalities and different people in there that keep things fresh and enjoyable. And that's something that I, I think I definitely enjoy uh, the longer I've been around is actually the difference in the human side of it, getting the, the different flavour of people and, and what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. There's, there's there's no retirement in your voice whatsoever, is there? You're going right through to the World Cup next year? <laughs> well, yet again, that's not my decision, so I'm uh, worrying about myself just playing okay. good rugby at the moment. And, um, that's where I want to be, so I've just got to worry about myself and play good rugby, and then all of a sudden that hopefully will happen. A couple of quick questions, we'll let you go. I always appreciate your time, mate. Thank you so much. Um, when you've got uh, this team in front of you, Argentina, is it really that different? Do you look at every team, okay, these are green jerseys, blue and white jerseys, yellow jerseys, or, or you know, whatever. How does, it, how does that happen in your own mind after so much test rugby? Yeah, every, every, every team is the same. And when I say that, they are playing for the country, so they're going to give it everything they've got. I'm yet to play an easy test match. And it doesn't matter what the result has been. Um, I'll always come off whether I've played five minutes or, or 80 minutes. Um, I've been sore and beaten up. So that's the first thing that I always look at is like they're going to leave no stone unturned. They're going to bring their best performance. Uh, but then at the same time, they are different. They have different strengths and weaknesses. So this week here, obviously Argentina, um, they've had a couple of really good games so far this year. They're playing a pretty expansive style, but yet again they have a, a good a good scrum and a good 
um, line out more so they can actually affect you pretty quickly there. So it's being prepared for whatever style they bring, but at the same time making sure that we're not allowing them to, to get what they want. All right, two quick questions on the on just the home front. You're playing in Christchurch. Do you get to go home at all and do some kind of normal family stuff, or you're just in camp the whole time? How does it work? Yeah, so when we're uh, in camp in your home city, uh, you can go home and stay, except for the night before um, the game. So making sure that you're getting good sleep is one of the critical things. But um, everyone's different. Some people like to go home. Some people like to stay in and, and stay away and really. Uh, immerse themselves in the, the full camp. Uh, for myself, I've been sneaking home the last couple of nights. Uh, nice to, to see my wife and uh, the kids are normally in bed, but nice to just get away from rugby, but at the same time not leaving until I know I've done everything I have to around my learning, my homework. Um, so then when I am at home, I can be at home. There's nothing worse than trying to take work home. Yeah. And finally, look, for all of us with grey hair, mate, those greys in your beard are, fa- are fantastic. But I'm just wondering, have you thought of dyeing them black for extra intimidation or not? <laughs> no, I'm, uh, I'm cop- copping a little bit of stick from Nana at the moment, saying that my hair's a bit, uh, a bit raggly, a bit, a bit uh, rough. But Dane Coles has actually got a few more greys in his hair. Right. So if I shave my beard off, I, I show my true age where he's, uh, he's probably one that needs to dye his hair. Hey, look, all the very best again for another Test match. You play with such pride and energy, enthusiasm, commitment for our country, mate. We absolutely love it. Very good luck. All the best for uh, the weekend. Awesome. Cheers. Thank you.